No score, bottom of the second, and San Diego starting pitching falters again. Chet Lemon aboard with a single, and Tim Lawler is taken deep by Marty Castillo. Castillo had only four home runs during the regular season, but like the Padres' Kurt Babacqua in Game 2, he vaults from the small print and into the headlines with a two-run homer that gives the Tigers the early lead. Later on, same inning, another run already home. Greg Booker on in relief of Lawler. He walks Larry Herndon with the bases loaded. And now it's 4-0 in favor of Detroit. The Padres have trailed early in every playoff and World Series game this year. We go to the fourth. The Tigers lead is 5-1. Two men on for San Diego. Bobby Brown's bouncer is misplayed by Marty Castillo, but he recovers in time to get Kurt Babacqua, who seems to have an adventure at third base every game. Now it's the seventh. Bill Shearer on in relief of Milt Wilcox. A man aboard as Steve Garvey connects. Larry Herndon tries to backhand it, but can't. It goes as a double, and Tony Gwynn arrives safely at third. He would score from there on a Greg Nettle sacrifice fly to make it 5-2. That brought relief ace Willie Hernandez on. Terry Kennedy connects. Deep center field, about 420 feet away. Chet Lemon makes a terrific catch to save the day for the Tigers. When he first hit it, I just knew I had to get back because it was hit on the line, and I was playing kind of shallow. And I knew it was important that I break, and I, I think the key was that I looked up in the right time because you tend to not run far, far enough or, or you uh, run too far. And I was very fortunate. I looked up at the right time, and it was just to the left of me. Two outs now on the top of the knife, and Hernandez looking to finish it. Garvey again at the plate, lost one into shallow center. Lemon will come on to put it away and seal the Tiger victory. Afterwards, Castillo talked with him. That was the most awesome feeling of my whole life. As soon as I hit it, I knew it was a home run, you know, but uh, a lot of things go through your head. I was thinking of my wife, uh, who's due any minute, and uh, I go, well, there's one for the baby. I just hope I didn't put her in the labor by doing that. I checked with Marty a moment ago. No baby yet. Stay with us. Len Berman talks. The World Series pregame show is brought to you by Campbell's. Stir up the Campbell's. Soup is good food. And by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Home runs to three. You'll see him here picking up the winner's check. He's $50,000 richer. There he is with his batting practice pitcher, the man who served him up, Art Kushner. Now stay with us. Our pregame show will continue. Well, I had to come out here to Detroit just to check out the political action, of course, and thought as long as I was here, I'd be at Tiger Stadium today. I remember, in fact, four years ago during the 1980 Republican Convention, I jogged from my hotel over to Tiger Stadium just to get a look at the park. You grew up in South Dakota as a fan, oddly enough, of Jackie Robinson and the Brooklyn Dodgers. Yeah, radio carried all the way to South Dakota in those days, and I affected that pigeon-toed stance, played second base, and there all the similarity ended. He was a baseball player. They described me, bad glove, but no hit. <laughs> <laughs> you once made a pilgrimage to that holy spot, Ebbets Field. I did. The last summer that the Dodgers were in New York, I found my way all the way there, got on a subway in midtown Manhattan, out to Brooklyn for the game, terrified, but absolutely elated. It's a spiritual experience in many ways. You and I feel exactly the same way about the game. I have carried this Mickey Mantle baseball card in my wallet since I was 12. Mickey Mantle, the guy used to kill us every summer. <laughs> Thank you, Tom Brokaw. Enjoy the game. Thanks, Bob. Let's go over now to Len Berman. Thank you, Bob. I carry pictures of Vin and Joe with me. What makes an old ballpark such as Tiger Stadium so safe from a distance? Here's the view from down inside a wave as it washes over you. This is what you'd see if you were sitting directly behind the left field foul pole. Now here's the view from dead away center field. I mean dead away. Here's the view from left center. When you have to look to the left to see center. And in some places there's no view of the ball game at all. But you can still hear it pretty well. It sounds like there's a ball game going on. Yeah, we usually listen to it on the radio. But they said we had to unplug them tonight because there was a blackout. It was blacking out half the stadium or something like that. Your little radio at the hot dog stand, huh? Right, no little radio tonight. And how's this view up from a famous landing pad? This is the view from where Reggie hit his famous all-star game home run. Except we can't find the ball up here anywhere. But we did find the ball that Marty Castillo hit for a homer last night after it dropped down from the upper deck. And here it is. There it is. That's the game winner for the night, folks. I'll give you $5 for it. Never. I'll give you $5 and an NBC Sports hat. Never. 
Obviously, if he won't accept an NBC sports hat, the ball must be priceless. <laughs> okay, Bob. All right, thanks very much, Len. It's a big day of sports on NBC. A boxing doubleheader follows the ball game. But right now, priority number one is just where it should be. The World Series. <laughs>